Shalom, shalom. Most high in Christ bless you. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captain. My name is Captain Abiel, and to my right, Officer Gabriel. Today's topic is the pale face meat market of the 1800s. Now, this is going to be a little graphic, uh, so sit tight. We're going to get into this, uh, get into this very much needed information. All right. Um, throughout history, um, as soon as 1492 all the way up to the 1600s and beyond, um, atrocities have happened not only to blacks and Latinos, but the Native American uh, people, the indigenous people of this side of the Western Hemisphere. Okay. Um, and we're going to bring out a couple things that you may or may not have known. All right. So the Bible talks about Gad. The, Gad, uh, the Gadites are today known today as the Native Americans, okay? Um, and there's been many, many atrocities that's, ha that's happened to them. Um, but I'm going to talk about three key people that, uh, that they're famous for, uh, for, uh, for committing crimes against our people. The first bastard on the list is Colonel John Shivington. Before Shivington and his men left the area, they plundered the teepees and took the horses. After the smoke cleared, Shivington's men came back and killed many of the wounded. They also scalped many of the dead, regardless of whether they were women, children, or infants. Shivington and his men dressed their, uh, dressed their weapons, hats, and gears, and gear with scalps and other body parts, including human fetuses and male and female genitalia. They also publicly displayed these battle trophies in Denver's Apollo Theater and area saloons. Fingers and ears were cut off of the bodies for the jewelry they carried. The body of white antelope lying solitarily in the creek bed was a prime target. Besides scalping him, the soldiers cut off his nose, ears, and testicles, the last for a tobacco pouch. Colonel John Shivington, congratulations. You are a disgrace, disgraceful bastard. I hope you burn in hell. The next diaper stain that we have over here is Lieutenant Colonel Custer. Custer was the Hitler of the Plains. His cavalry murdered, pillaged, and raped their way across Indian country in the late 1800s, while he sat in the saddle and orchestrated the entire scene. His troopers made coin purses of the scrotums of, the, of Indian men and ornaments for their saddle horns out of the vaginas of Indian women. Congratulations, L uh, Lieutenant Colonel Custer. You are also a dirty, disgusting bastard. I hope you burn in hell. The last man, which, was, which would definitely not be the least, Andrew Jackson, the man on your $20 bill. He was known as the Indian Killer and also Sharp Knife. That was his Indian name. So a man nicknamed Indian Killer and Sharp Knife surely deserves the, the top spot on the list of worst U.S. presidents. All of them are garbage anyway. Andrew Jackson was a forceful proponent of the Indian Removal Act in May 28, 1830, which became law. Others have less genteel way of describing the seventh president of the United States. Jackson, also a slave owner, had a wall in the White House with the skin of Native Americans draped on it. He created leather from Native Americans, largely gathered from tribes which had peaceful relations with the United States government before he decided he wanted the land owned by Spain in the South. So now, how could these three men be in any seat of power? Well, when you're the enemy and you have power over, over something, then you can have a seat of power. But you know what? These men will pay for the atrocities that were done against our people among the Native Americans and indigenous people. 
Go to Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4 will let you know exactly the spirit that this demonic being has. Go ahead. The book of Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So it says, behold, the soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Meaning, you got mental problems, man. Your spirit is off. How can you cut someone's fingers off when they're wounded, dying slowly? You can't, you, you, your mind ain't there. You want to cut off the genitalia of the men? You want to cut off the vaginas of the women to make saddle horn ornaments so like that you can imagine that you're having sex with them? You're not upright. And this is not a racist statement. The Caucasian man is an animal. You're an animal. And you're going to be treated as such when, when Christ returns. Oh, man, I can't wait until that black face cracks the sky and you try to attack the, our Lord and Savior because you're going to find out that day that's the Lord. So Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4 is letting you know that his mind is not upright in him. And this book right here, Bartolome de las Casas, a short account of the destruction of the Indies. This right here is a, is, a, is a quick account of the atrocities that happened when the Europeans came over here. So again, Bartolome de las Casas, this is the information. Go ahead, read. There are two main ways in which those who have traveled to this part of the world pretending to be Christians. Pretending to be Christians, because once again, in another class I had, I had made mention that I, we understand that the Native Americans do not trust anybody with the Bible. You understand what I'm saying? Trust and believe. This book is our book. This book belongs to the blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. This book is ours. But the enemy, our enemy, brought this book to us and retorted it to us in a way that has nothing to do with us. You understand? This book is ours. They stole it from us. They stole our, nas our nationality, our language, our heritage, everything from us. And then they came back to us with our book, not knowing that this was our book. Be patient with us. When you see the purple and gold, when you see Israel united in Christ, trust and believe we're here to help. We're here to show you, thus saith the Lord, and you have to return as the tribe of Gad. Read. Pretending to be Christian. The white man pretended to be a follower of Christ. They even pretend that Christ is white and he's not. Go ahead. Have uprooted this pitiful peoples and wiped them from the face of the earth. They called us pitiful because we were simple people. We lived from the land. We had teepees. We had uh, uh, encampments. We were nomadic. And this is what they did to us. They, they wasted our people. They wasted everything. They put set things on fire. And we died horrible. But why did these, these things happen? Because we broke God's laws. We're going to get into that. Go ahead. First, they have waged war on them. Unjust, cruel, bloody, and tyrannical. War. The pretending Christians did this to the Native Americans. Go ahead. Second, they have murdered anyone and everyone. Who has shown the slightest sign of resistance. The pretending Christians did that to the Native American uh, in, on this land. Go ahead. Or even of wishing to escape the torment to which they have subjected him. This latter policy has been instrumental in suppressing the Native leaders. And, indeed, given that the Spaniards normally spare only women and children, it has led to the annihilation of all adult males. They were trying to destroy the men so that our lineage would not continue. Read on. Whom they habitually subject to the harshest and most iniquitous and brutal slavery. That's called perpetual, perpetual, perpetual hatred. Read that part again. It has led to the annihilation of all adult males, whom they habitually subject to the harshest and most iniquitous and brutal slavery. So the Native Americans did go to slavery before the so-called blacks went into slavery. Remember, this is Bartolome de las Casas. This was back in the uh, 1492 all the way up to the 1600s this was going on. And then when they almost annihilated our people, 
Then they went to Africa and got Negroes, not Africans. There's a difference. Well, let's continue talking about our brothers and sisters of the Native American peoples. Go ahead. Whom they habitually subject to the harshest and most iniquitous and brutal slavery that man has ever devised for his fellow men, treating them, in fact, worse than animals. We were treated worse than animals. Go ahead. All the many and infinitely varied ways that have been devised for oppressing these peoples can be seen to flow from one or other of these to diabolical and tyrannical policies. Read on. The reason the Christians have murdered on such a vast scale and killed anyone and everyone in their way is purely and simply greed. All right. They That's all it was. They were, they were greedy of the things that we had. Their God was gold. We had gold, but we, wasn't, we weren't going crazy over gold like that over here. You understand? Their God was gold, so they killed us. They chopped, our, they chopped off our hands. They chopped off our noses. They skinned us alive. They would cut the vaginas off the women, the, the genitals off the men, and they would rape the kids. Christians pretending to believe in Christ that didn't exist. A Caucasian Christ that does not exist. Read on. They have set out to line their pockets with gold and to amass private fortunes as quickly as possible so that they can so that they so that they can then assume a status quite at odds with that into which they were born. Read on. Their insatiable greed and overweening ambition know no bounds. The land is fertile and rich, the inhabitants simple forbearing and submissive. Read on. The Spaniards have shown not the slightest consideration for these people, treating them, and I speak from firsthand experience, having been there from the outset, not as brute animals. Indeed, I would to God that they had done and had shown them the consideration they afford their animals, so much as piles of dung in the middle of the road. So we were garbage in the, in the, in the sight of these men. You can put that away. We were garbage in the sight of men. In these uh, of these men, all they wanted was was our was our resources, okay? Because at that time Spain was going through it. But what they did, they said, rather than going back and forth, why don't we just go there and live there? That's what happened. The Europeans came over here and they started to take us, uh, take our lands, uh, take our resources, and eventually put us in 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 uh in constant in what we what what I like to call concentration camps. You call them reservations. Go to 2 Maccabees chapter 7. This is a long, this one is a long read because it was a long account, but we're going to go through it. 2 Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 1. So yes, it's going to go a little bit beyond the 15 minutes. Go ahead. It came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh. So it was unlawful for the Israelites to eat swine's flesh, but the king over here happens to be a king in Greece. We were, yes, we were slaves in Greece. And it's going to go into, into the further, uh, further proof of Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4, where it states that this man's mind is not, or his spirit is not upright in him. Read. And were tormented with scourges and whips. So we were tormented with scourges and whips. They loved to beat us. They loved it. Go ahead. But one of them that spake first said thus, what wouldst thou ask or learn of us? So what the hell do you want to do? What, what do you want to do with us? What do you want to learn from us? Go ahead. We are ready to die. We are prepared to die. You know why? Because they knew about regeneration. They knew that once they died, they would come back so long as they kept the commandments as Israelites on this land. Go ahead. Rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. Because our father is the most high God, the God of the nation of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Go ahead. Then the king, being in a rage, commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot. Now, if you had an upright spirit in you, why would you make cauldrons hot? Think about it. Why would you want to get a hot pan? For what reason? You're going to see. Watch. Which forthwith being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first. See? The first thing that they do is cut out the tongue because they like to mutilate us first. Read on. And to cut off the utmost parts of his body. That's talking about the fingers. That's talking about the toes. That's talking about the ears, the nose. You understand? And not, and not like clip. No, it was slow. You were feeling that whole thing. Okay? They would clip the penis off, then the balls. 
That's what they would do. This is what's going through their mind. Their mind is not upright in him. If it happened to the, if it happened in ancient times with the Greeks, the people, the Americans are what? The, uh, the, the Caucasian man is what? An extension of Greece, an extension of the Romans. They love this thing. They love to see the sight of blood as long as it's not theirs. Read. The rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. Now when, now when he was thus maimed in all his members. Maimed. He was maimed. He was maimed. Not only did they cut off the, the, the fingers and the toes and everything, they also maimed him. They beat, they beat each, each, uh, each joint. They cut each joint. So it went beyond the fingers and the toes. It, now it's going to forearms. Now it's going to a whole arm. Now it's going to a leg, a femur. Let's get rid of all these things. Go ahead. He commanded him being yet alive to be brought to the fire. He was yet, I don't know how he didn't pass out. He was yet alive. And then they put him where? To be brought to the fire and to be fried in the pan. You see that? Who does that? What man has the mentality to go ahead and put another man? Even if you were the executioner. You still don't have no type of remorse or no spirit to be like, no, you know what, hold on, this ain't right. No. Their spirit is not upright in them. Read. And as the vapor of the pan was for a good space dispersed, they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully. So now here's, a, here's something that you, will not, that, that you may not know about the Israelites. We didn't give them the satisfaction of our tears, which might make you think that we're a little psychotic. We're not. But the thing is that we understand about regeneration. We understand that we will come back. Our God will defend us. Trust and believe, Native Americans. Trust and believe, indigenous people. Our God is going to defend us. For the atrocities that, that, that happened to you uh, from 1492 all the way on up, the atrocities that continue to happen to our Native American people, missing children, missing women, uh, missing men, all of our families, trust and believe there's a living, breathing God is going to restore us to our former glory. Read on. The Lord God looketh upon us, and in truth hath comfort in us, as Moses in his song, which witness to their faces declared, saying, And he shall be comforted in his servants. So when the first was dead after this manner, they brought the second to make him a mocking stock. And when they had pulled off the skin of his head with the hair. That's where scalping started. Scalping did not start with the Native Americans. Scalping what began with the Native Americans after the white man did that to us. Remember, the law that says eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, scalp for a scalp. So the Native Americans never started that. It was the white man during the Greek times that were scalping our people and they were skin us alive as if we were deer. It would start with the scalp, and it worked their way down and pull our skin while we were alive, skinned alive. That didn't start with the Native Americans. That started with the Greeks, and even beyond that. But it wasn't us. Read. When they had pulled off the skin of his head with the hair, they asked him, Wilt thou eat before thou be punished throughout every member of thy body? But he answered in his own language and said, No. Wherefore he also received the next torment in order. As the former did. So they broke off his fingers, his tongue, and cut off his tongue. They broke his legs, everything. They took him out. Then they fried him the same way they did his brother. Go ahead. And when he was at the last gasp, he said, Thou, like a fury, takest us out of this present life. But the king of the world shall raise us up who have died for his laws. That was going into Christ. He knew about Christ then, but they just knew him as the king of the world. Go ahead. Unto everlasting life. Right. Go ahead. After him was a third made a mocking stock. So his third brother. Now his three brothers. Go ahead. And when he was required, he put out his tongue, and that right soon, holding forth his hands manfully, and said courageously, These I had from heaven, and for his laws I despise them. So he's, he took out his tongue, and he took out his hands, and he said, I hate these things. I've had them since I was, since I was in heaven. Because he understand, again, the power of regeneration. I've had these since I was in heaven, and I hate them. Right now, because of what? Because of the sin that I've committed or the sins that were committed. Because we, oh, we've been a sinful people. We understood why these things were happening to us. 
So he offered himself and said, go ahead, take them. But I know that my Lord is going to give them back to me. Read on. And for his laws, I despise them. And from him, I hope to receive them again. See, go ahead. In so much that the king and they that were with him marveled at the young man's courage. Because they were expecting him to be like, no, please, God. I don't want to die. No, we never gave him the satisfaction of that. Our tears never fell from our face. In the face of the enemy, you never want to give them the, 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 the satisfaction. Go ahead. For that he nothing regarded the pain. He didn't regard the pain. Chop. And he stood there. What's next? Chop. What's next? Chop. They cut off his tongue. He can't talk no more now. But he was not weak. Read on. Now when this man was dead also, they tormented and mangled the fourth in like manner. Hmm. So when he was ready to die, he said thus. It is good being put to death by men to look for hope from God to be raised up again by him. And this is what we're asking of you. Return to the Father. Return to the law, statutes, and commandments, bro. You so-called Native Americans, you so-called indigenous, come back to your true nationality as Gadites. These are the laws, statutes, and commandments that belong to you. And you were the lawgiver over here. You were the lawgiver. You were the last ones to even raise that's not coincidence. That's not a coincidence. That's part of the law. You were keeping the law. Read on. As for thee, thou shalt have no resurrection to life. Afterward, they brought the fifth also and mingled him. Then looked he unto the king and said, Thou hast power over men. America has power over men. Thou art corruptible. And America is corruptible. Thou doest what thou wilt. And America does whatever the hell it wants. Yet think not that our nation is forsaken of but God. But don't think that the Native American nations, the 500 nations, don't think that God has forgotten you. God never forgot you. All you have to do is remember God so that he can remember you and give you the, the, bring you back to your former glory as Israelites. Read. But abide a while. And behold his great power. But America is going to abide for a while and they're going to behold God's power when he returns. Go ahead. How he will torment thee and thy seed. How he's going to term, ter, uh, uh, he's gonna terminate the enemy. He's going to torment them. Go ahead. After him also they brought the sixth, who being ready to die said, Be not deceived without cause, for we suffer these things for ourselves having sinned against our God. Therefore, marvelous things are done unto us. So these marvelous things, like the 215 children that disappeared, like the 150,000 Native American children that suffered abuse and physical abuse and mental abuse, like the missing indigenous women, like the, like the star-like tours that went on, and all the atrocities that happened to the Native Americans. These things... These things happen to our people, and these were marvelous things. I'm not talking about in a positive way. I'm talking about outrageous. These things happen to us, but there is hope. Read. But think not thou that takest in hand to strive against God, that thou shalt escape unpunished. America will not escape punished. And all the people that had us in captivity, they are not going to escape. They will suffer. Trust and believe, Native Americans. They will suffer. The Native Americans will come back to their former glory as Israelites, as a tribe of Gad. Read. But the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day, she bare it with a good courage you know? because of the hope that she had in the Lord. Because of the belief that she had in God. Go ahead. Yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, filled with courageous spirits and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach, she said unto them, I cannot tell how ye came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life. Neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you. But doubtless the creator of the world, who formed the generation of man, and who found out the beginning of all things, will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again. And that's what we're expecting. God will give you breath and life again. You suffered tragedy. You suffered Many things, but what you will get is retribution. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed 
But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.